My name is Nathan Vanzani and welcome back to Catching Steam. This video is for those educators trying to improve or advance 3D printing in their classroom. If you're kind of struggling to figure out what projects to do, or maybe you're struggling printing all the projects off that students are making, this video is going to be for you. It's going to be pretty short and sweet, but I just want to show you a few awesome projects that are perfect for the classroom and then a couple tips and tricks to really help speed up that printing process. So if that sounds interesting to you, stay tuned. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is just jump to a couple of those little tips that help me speed up that printing process and I had a lot, le a lot less issues and a lot faster times. First thing, get one of the, these PEI plates if you don't already have one. The beautiful thing about this is you no longer have to worry about bed adhesion. When this heats up, the plastic sticks to it much much better, better than using glass with painter's tape with or glue sticks or hairspray, any of that stuff you put on glass or maybe you still have the stock bed on this. These prints stick so much better on here. And then afterwards when it cools, it just falls right off. It's magnetic, so it can just come right off. It can cool a little bit quicker. They're flexible, so the parts can pop off if you need them to. If you don't already have this, please get one. The next tip I'm gonna give you is to increase the nozzle size on your printing nozzle. Most printers, they come with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, which is great. It's a nice little happy medium for you know speed and resolution, but almost all the projects you're gonna be printing in your classroom, you're not gonna care about resolution that much. You're barely gonna notice. So if you increase it to a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, your speeds will increase dramatically. You can also get to a 0.8 millimeter nozzle if you really don't care about resolution. But that 0.6 I found is a really happy medium, but go ahead and find that nozzle size that works for you. And don't be afraid to go in and into those settings and increasing the speed of your printer. There's two main projects I, I really wanna highlight for you to do in your classroom. One is this little ladder toy, this little tumbling ladder. Maybe you've seen versions of this uh, before. And then this is a tippy top. These are also a very common toy. These, if you spin it like a regular top, it should flip up upside down onto its stem. They also make a really good cat toy apparently. But anyway, so this is gonna be the first project I recommend you doing is this uh, tumbling ladder. If you have a slower 3D printer, just have the students make these tumblers and print these off ahead of time. These are just little ladders. I also made, uh, I have little stands as well. This, all these STL files are down in the comments, so you can feel free to print them, see how they work and go from there. But I print off these little makeshift, this little stand as well so it can stand up. I also made this, it's capped on both sides. So you can put the toy or the little tumbler in here and then it kind of acts like a fidget. So now it can just go like this and never really falls out. So students can just, you know, fidget with this if they want. Um, but the first challenge I'm gonna highly recommend that you do is this ladder toy. It is, it's perfect. You, it's perfect for the classroom because this is all students have to make is just this little piece of plastic. And you can tell this would hardly take any time to print. I print it standing up on my bed like this. So that way you don't have to put supports down into these seams. You, depending on what kind of printer you have, I have to print with a raft. Otherwise these keep falling off. But this is a still a very, very, very fast print. It's pretty quick to design. So students can design it. You can print it off and see if it tumbles. I highly doubt they're gonna work the first time because to get this to work, you have to, you have to kind of make this key slot shape. It has to be able to slide and slide down. It has to reach the next one before it reaches a circle so it can spin again. So if it ends up, if they make this too short, it's gonna tumble and fall out and it's gonna, gonna flip out before it makes it to the bottom. Or the biggest thing students like to, um, that they mess up on is the tolerances. They just assume, hey, this is three millimeters, so I can make the slot three millimeters. No, you can't. It will get stuck. 
So you need to make this slot bigger than this to give it some wiggle room so it can actually fit down in there. Same thing with that hole for it to rotate. Um, they're gonna notice that these 3D prints aren't perfect, so they have to be able to account for that. Same thing in the real world. So it's great conversation starter with that. And afterwards, you can add some additional challenges. You can have them design the ladder if you'd like. Uh, you can also have them make a ladder out of, let's say, popsicle sticks. So maybe they 3D print their own jig, so that way they can line up the popsicle sticks and make their own popsicle stick ladder, make it stand up, and then they need to make their own tumbler to tumble down it. And again, I love it. This is smaller than those name tags you probably have students make. And if you have them make a little design on here, when they print it, then you'll know whose is whose. And then you can give it to the students. It probably won't work. And then after that, they can go back to the drawing board and try again. And the, these are such simple designs that you can do it in simple programs like Tinkercad and also work in Fusion 360, um, SolidWorks, whatever program you're using, you can design these. So this is a great first project. Again, I recommend printing off a ladder per group and maybe some stands, or you can give them the little enclosed one if you'd like that more. But after you print them off, then students have this and each of their prints, they're gonna keep testing until they can get it to work right. All right, now the next one is going to be these little tippy tops. So how to make these work is you need to make a shell as thin as you possibly can. So you're essentially gonna have a sphere and then a sphere inside of it that's gonna hollow out this shape. And then from there, you need to be able to add some mass to that bottom. And then from the bottom, you need to create another hole that that stem goes down into. And the stem is separate. So again, with tolerances, this is a little trickier tolerance to hit because if you're good, you should be able to get this to fit without any glue. Um, so that's this doesn't have any glue in there. I printed this flat like this. This one I printed upside down with no support, or, or sorry, with supports from the base. So that way it doesn't get all inside of the sphere, but it still supports, you know, right there. And then if they're good, they should be able to get push that right in and spin it, and it should flip up on, on its stem and go upside down. But hopefully this was helpful. Again, um, these are also great. Maybe if a student is finished with the project, you know, early and you're like, what can I give them? This is a great project for that. Um, and you can keep scaffolding it, make it a little more difficult, make it a little more difficult. So you can have them design their ladder. Don't give them the stands, have them design the stands, however you want to do it. But for the classroom, I understand you want to keep those, the size of the parts small, but you still want to incorporate the great things about steam and make that design challenge where they have to make something doesn't work, let's go back, make it better, things like that. And that's what I really love about these, this, these projects. So if you, have, if you just wanna download them, look at it and decide if that's something you wanna do in your classroom, those links are down in the description. Otherwise, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, but hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much.